Have you been feeling overwhelmed by your goals or your to-do list? Is it making you feel like it's really hard to get things done and enjoy life? On today's episode, spiritual teacher Gangaji joins us to help guide us into more calmness and stillness so that we can enjoy life more and be more present with everything that we do. Welcome to Thriving Launch with Louise Congdon and Kamala Chambers, the show for heart-centered entrepreneurs who want it all. Five days a week, we bring you different segments to inspire you to live a life of freedom. We interview the leading experts in the field of business, health, and love. Be sure to check out Training Tuesdays, where we give you a clear action plan to grow your own business. Do you have a product or service that you would like to sell online? Or maybe you've been thinking about it, but you're reserved to do it because you need a website and you need complicated systems and you need to spend money. Well, I've created a completely free course that teaches you how to use Facebook in a purely organic way. This means no ads and no money are needed. You can use Facebook completely free. So head on over to thrivinglaunch.com. Opt into my profit from social media course. I'm going to teach you the free methods to using Facebook to make money today. Today's guest joins us with an incredible story of having her own successful practice as an acupuncturist, getting a college degree, and living a life that was quote unquote successful, but always pervaded with a sense of longing and a desire for fulfillment. Then she went to India, found a teacher, and is now someone who is helping others across the world find peace. And in today's episode, Gangaji joins us to help you find more peace and a, sp- a space of stillness. All right, Thriving Launchers, it's really a pleasure to have Gangaji here on the show today, someone who I deeply admire and whose work has greatly impacted me and my personal life. So Gangaji, are you ready to launch? Oh, yes. Thank you. Happy to be here. Wonderful. You know, one of the things that a lot of us as entrepreneurs and people who are really interested in having a successful life and kind of having it all, so to speak, One of the things and one of the traps we can really get wrapped up in is this desire of what having it all means and constantly trying to pursue goal after goal after goal and never really feeling fully nourished. And that's where your work has really blessed me because I come to your work, come to your teachings. And one of the biggest things that you talk about is stopping Uh, And I, I wanted to dive in with you a little bit about that and how that helps us. Oh, great, because in our culture, often stopping is heresy, because everything says we have to go and just go harder and faster. But it was the essential teaching that my teacher, whom I call Papaji, uh, gave me, and it was so radical, is still so radical, that I'm always happy to to pass it on. So what is one of the ways that uh, we can stop because I know that I'm a very driven person. I have big, long to-do lists. I have goals. And sometimes my mind is uh, overwhelmed uh, and sometimes very excited also by the goals. So, you know, sometimes it's a blessing and sometimes it's this incredible curse to always be going. Sometimes it's wonderful, sometimes not. And uh, even today I, I got really excited and happy and I looked forward to today's interview because I needed to stop. And sometimes that is such a hard thing to do. Well, to me, the essence of the message, the invitation rather to stop, is to recognize that we can still have all the goals we have. But if we are going to the goals, that's very different from coming from fulfillment and these goals are then an expression of that fulfillment. So then the invitation to stop is really to turn your attention to what is already at peace and fulfilled within you. And from that, then, you can live your life. And, of course, many people have no idea what they that even means. They would say, well, I'm not fulfilled. And if I can just get these goals checked off, then maybe I'll be closer to fulfillment. And that's what the conditioning of our society reinforces. So when I say it's a radical invitation, it really 
it demands just an incredible one second of of being willing to to lose everything actually and in that to discover what is here what is always here essentially who are you and if we aren't trying to find who we are through the manifestation of our goals, then we discover for a moment it's here. The fullness, the home, the truth, peace, love, bounty is already here. And from that then, oh, what a life. And uh, yes, I have goals and I appreciate my goals. And I can even go too fast sometimes and need to physically stop, mentally stop. But once you realize that this stopping is (laughs) <laughs> it's a benefit. It's not really a loss. In the willingness to lose, you actually gain. That's the paradox. Mm. I really enjoy the way that you laid that out for us and that paradox that is so alive in all of us moment by moment. One thing that I would love to hear from you is how do we remember What is the practice that you recommend to remind ourselves every day as we're getting wrapped up and as we're going and going and going, what do we do to practice this? Well, that's a great question. And, you know, there are many practices that support slowing down and stopping, certainly meditation practice or or being in nature or, or simply having fun. It can all be quite supportive. But for me, the essential support is being willing to ask yourself the question, what do I want? And if the more superficial answer to that question is, well, I want to complete this task or I want to make this money or get this relationship, then the next question under that is, what will that give me? These are questions of inquiry. And when they are really asked, what do I want? And if I get that, that I want, what will it give me? All of these questions are designed to to bring your attention back to what is already here. And so the practice for me is a practice of inquiry, Uh, inquiry in in not the academic sense, but in the alive sense of really questioning yourself. What am I doing? And in that, you see how you are perhaps overdoing and you're trying to get something. If I just stop trying to get in this moment, what do I have? So it's it's very simple, actually, and you use the word remember, and of course, that's the challenge. But since we're speaking of goals in particular, they do have something, often quite a lot, to do with desire. So it's already present, this what do I want. It's just that it's become focused on an external goal. Nothing wrong with that, but there's something deeper than that. And so just to simply tell the truth, what do I finally absolutely want? Whether this goal is met or not, what do I want? Who am I? What do I have? Just listening to you ask those questions and doing the work as you're as you're asking that, I felt myself thinking about some of the goals that I have. Okay, you know, get some of our marketing out and grow grow the show and do some stuff with our team that we need to do and get some speaking engagements and, you know, all these different goals and ideas and things that I have to do and things that I want to do and achievements that I want. And as I started to kind of think about it and, and earlier today, I was feeling a little stressed because there's so many things that I'm wanting and so many things that I'm wanting to accomplish. Uh, there's just sometimes not enough time in a whole week. And as I, as I thought about what you were asking, I thought, well, what I want is peace. (laughs) Yes. And and where do you look for that? Hmm. I sometimes find that I I get really wrapped up and that's Kamala's question was fantastic because sometimes I get very wrapped up in thinking that the peace is in the accomplishment of the goal. That's excellent, Luis, because it, it really in that moment of accomplishment, there is peace, there's fulfillment, but it's not a lasting peace. And so pretty soon we start to build up the next goal. And this is, in, in one very important sense, quite natural to active, alive human beings who are privileged to be able to pursue goals. But if what's overlooked is this unconditional peace, 
then then all of those accomplishments are really finally in vain. If you recognize this peace and then the accomplishments are aspects of coming from that peace, then each goal is is just an, another expression of the truth of this life called Luis living itself in multiple ways. So true. And I know that uh, you're not saying eradicate goals either. One way that I thrive most in life is by having big vision, big dreams that I'm working towards. And a lot of entrepreneurs are like that. And uh, what I'm hearing from you is that it's about it's it's about coming back to that state of peace through all of your day, not just when you reach that goal or after you have that cup of coffee or, or, you know, after you have that hit of brain chemicals that you're looking for. And uh, I love the way that you're presenting it. What else would you say? What do you think is one of the most important things that people need to know about this? Well, I, I like how you recognize that I'm not speaking against goals. I'm not anti-goal. But I am really interested in challenging people to discover what the ultimate goal is. What is the ultimate goal of your life? What is the desire of your life? If we just forget about the, the millions of things that we will have accomplished by the end of our life, what is it we want our lives to stand for? What are, what are we here for? And that's a goal that is somehow not something we fabricate in our minds, but it's something that's revealed. It's some purpose of what we are here for. And again, there are levels of depth to the answer to that question. I mean, for many people it, listening, it could be to create a successful business. That's my goal. But but what's under that? What's the purpose of creating a ses- successful business? What's the purpose of being a good mother or a good father or a good friend? And when we get underneath, we can really, truly ask the question, what do I want? In the sense of, do I want to awake? Do I want to be free? Do I want to to recognize my nature as peace? And in that, then there is such a broadening of the life that there's plenty of room for transitory goals because the permanent and fixed goal has been realized. And there's plenty of room for both success and failure, which of course are both a part of life. So really I'm 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 inviting everyone to take a deeper look and to recognize that certainly there are always more goals, but there's also, more importantly, from my standpoint, there's always a deeper realization, a deeper recognition of this ultimate goal of discovering the truth of who you are. This question about what is the purpose of my life, I think that it's a terrifying question for uh-huh. a lot of people. It's a, it's a really scary question because what if you ask that question? What if you actually take the time to stop and listen for the answer and nothing comes? Oh, I like this. This is very real. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like that it's terrifying because that it's real. It's not something you can just feed information to. It's really you're on the spot then. And yes, nothing may come, but there is an opening just in the willingness, regardless of the terror, the willingness to open and and actually consider such a question. That in itself is already a deepening of the life experience. And this this energy that we call terror often accompanies the most important moments of our life. I mean, to fall in love is terrifying too. To actually have success can be terrifying. To fail can be terrifying. So this terror has to be uh, met not as something that keeps us from, from delving very deeply inside, but just as something that appears or not when we ask these deep questions. You know, that brings me to ask, what do you suggest if we ask these questions and we start getting answers like, well, I'm afraid of failing, 
Uh, I'm afraid of not reaching that goal. I know that uh, when I went very deep into uh, living in an ashram and studying your work and uh, Papaji and Maharishi and uh, Yogananda, and one of the things that came to me was I, I was very scared of not reaching this ideal of enlightenment. Uh, yes. and, and And that's for, for a very long time, that's what I was left with is this disappointment that I would never feel the sense of I, I know, I know what I'm here for. And I, I found that peace mm -hmm. and now I can go and live and be in the world, but to also feel and know that peace. Mm. Well, I believe that most teachings ancient teachings and current teachings speak of of this goal of self-discovery as something in the future or something that you have to work to to get something you have to deserve really what i'm inviting you to is something that's already here that's always been here and it's not a question that you deserve it or you have achieved it or you can lose it it's simply paying attention to what has always been here in the midst of all the changes of your life, all the, the failures, all the, the fear of failure, all the successes. What, what substance has never left you? And this is not new, but somehow turning the attention of your mind toward it, it reveals that, oh, yes. I am here. I am awareness. And then the the feelings come from that as byproducts or and they can be a whole range of feelings including fear. And I guess what I'm really trying to say is you don't have to do it. It's not like a normal goal that you have to accomplish. It's recognizing what has already been done from the moment of your birth. From the moment consciousness arrived in this form that carries your name, what is always here? And in that, we are humbled, actually, because we recognize it's much bigger than any goal that we could imagine. Even if we've imagined really grand spiritual achievements, this is both more simple and deeper than our imagination, as beautiful as our imaginations are. And that's that's the thrill for me of speaking with people who who are willing to tell the truth. If you are willing to tell the truth, regardless of what you are feeling or your self judgments, there is at the root of that this alive consciousness that knows itself, and the mind, the thinking mind, can actually recognize that and say yes and surrender. I hope that was clear. I I loved your question. I, it was very clear. Good. I would like to draw out, pull back a little bit from the self and take a moment to ask about a global goal, like a global mission that we're in a time period that there are a lot of challenges on the planet. And do you feel like it feeds into like a, a bigger purpose I just want to hear about what your perspective is on the times we're in. Mm. Well, I, I think it's always been rough times if you look throughout history. And I do accept that we are in very uh, strange and dangerous times. I mean, our democracy is threatened from my point of view. And, and, and so, yes, it's a dangerous time. And that can serve us, of course, to shake us out of our torpor or taking everything for granted. We can recognize how fleeting our privileges and how our forms of relative freedom are. And if that shaking really shakes us to the core, then there is the potential for a creative force to be released and we can discover what appropriate action is. We can think what has never been thought. We can actually evolve to discover what, because of course we're not just talking about forms of government here, we're talking about the life of the planet. And all human beings everywhere are becoming more aware of that, whichever side of the divide they're on. And so the energy is there, if it will be 
how it will be spent, I think that we will have to discover and that each of us can take responsibility for that. How are we spending our individual life energy in in our particular place, minuscule place, relatively speaking, on the planet, and yet also huge if we recognize that we are we are all connected. So when the Buddha would talk about may all being awaken, that's the way Papaji ended each of his meetings. And may may all being find peace, may all being recognize itself as the truth of one being. And that's finally what we have to recognize is that it's, it is about me. I have to, to take the responsibility to really inquire what is my life about, where am I looking for my fulfillment, what is always here. But that, that willingness to go so completely inside then quite naturally is an expression of all points of being in the in the known universe at least perhaps beyond so for me it's a mystery how it will be used or what will happen i mean civilizations have ended great governments have ended in fact they usually have ended by reactionary forces internally and externally so it would not be unique for our civilization to end but maybe it's unique that we are aware of how many civilizations have ended and we are aware of the fragility of of life forms. Life forms are very fragile and in that we need each other and also in that we have each other. So if we can listen to each other, we can discover what, what all being needs for its well-being. Before we go, is there any last bit of wisdom you want to leave the Thriving Launchers with? Mm. Well, I would say as part of my invitation for you to tell the truth about what you want, when you are willing to tell the truth about that and you have a glimpse of the bigness of that, whether you understand it or can put it into words, is actually secondary. Then the, the words that I would have around that is to trust that, to trust yourself in the deepest level, and and in that trust to open and discover more deeply, what do you want? It's a wonderful, wonderful message. Thank you so much for joining us today. Everybody at Thriving Launch, we've been here with Gangaji. It's been a real pleasure and honor to have her here today. And if any of you want to get in touch with her work or any of her upcoming events, which are fantastic, feel free to go to thrivinglaunch.com and we'll have a link to her events as well as other things and gifts that she has for the Thriving Launch community. Thank you so much for joining us today, Gangaji. Oh, I'm so honored. Beautiful conversation. You've been listening to the Thriving Launch Podcast. For books and resources related to today's episode, make sure to head over to thrivinglaunch.com. We'll see you there. If you've enjoyed today's episode, be sure to tune into our next episode where we bring on Mastin Kip and we're going to be talking about how you can do what you love and get paid awesome to do exactly what you love. So make sure to tune into our next episode. And as always, if you're enjoying the show, make sure to subscribe to the show via iTunes or your favorite podcast user. 